Sins of the heart Ya Allah save me from From the sins of the heart Ya Allah save me from From the sins of the heart Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله ما دي سان برادرز ما دي فيوز ما دي نشانة ويلكم تو ذيس براند نيو سلسلة ذيس براند نيو بروجرام أوف سينز أوف ذي هارت In this program, we will discuss many effects, many sins which are related to our inner self, our hearts. We will learn regarding the Quranic verses. We will learn regarding what the Hadith has to say. And inshallah, we will come across some solutions. We will mention some solutions which we can adopt so that we are safe from these sins. Inshallah, in this silsila, we will discuss many heart, uh, sins of the heart. For example, showing off. Ujub. self conceit we'll discuss about jealousy hatred malice and there's many other such as backbiting many other sins which we will discuss before we start today's episode let's mention a blessing of sending durood upon the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam there are many blessing in sending salawat upon the last messenger of allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam in one hadith the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wasallam he has reported to have said that the individual who recites the most durood upon me will be the closest to me on yawmul qiyamah my dear viewers of madin channel that day when everyone brothers will forget their sisters the father will forget his kids the mother will forget her kids on that day where well, there'll be no one there to help there'll only be the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam for in order for us to be close to the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam on that day one way is in sending salawat durood in abundance upon the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam my dear viewers of madini channel after living a share in this life in the life of this world each and every one of us must embark on a journey in the afterlife during which we will encounter the delicate phases of our grace resurrection the bridge of sirat after which we will arrive at our destination whether that be heaven or whether that be hell the good deeds which we do in this dunya they will determine that our final destination insha allah will be paradise however the bad deeds which we commit in this dunya the bad deeds which we commit on this planet in this on this earth will determine our end to lead to be in the fire of hell and there are many good deeds which a person can do and those good deeds they are visible they are apparent for example if you are reading namaz if you read salah that is an apparent good deed but there are some good deeds which are invisible only a person himself will know whether he is doing that or not for example If someone is sincere, he is sincere to an individual. That is a deed which is invisible, like this. Bad deeds, sins, have two types as well: external sins and the inner sins. External sins, such as, for example, if you murder someone, that is an external sin. if you drink alcohol that is an external sin whereas the internal sins are for example if you have hatred for someone if you are jealous of someone if you want to show off this is the sin of an individual's inner self and 
If these two inner sins and the external sins, they have a link. And the link between these two is that in order to save yourself, in order to protect yourself from the external sins, an individual will have to first refrain from this inner sins. For example, I give you an example. If a person goes on to murder an individual, and this is an external sin as we have just discussed, but the cause of that external sin will be a multiple reasons and those multiple reasons will be your inner sins. The sins which you have your inside, inner self. For example, you might hate the person. For example, you might not like the person. You think you've been backbiting about that person. You have got hatred for that individual. All these inner sins have led you to commit this external sin of murdering that individual. So we've got to know, we have, we have learned that to protect ourselves from committing external sins, we have to first stop from internal sins. And it is necessary for us to learn what these internal sins are and to protect ourselves and find and know the solutions of how to overcome these sins and how to protect ourselves. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Inshallah, the first Sin which we will talk about, which is in relation to the heart, which is to do with the inner self, is the sin of showing off. First, let's understand what is showing off. Showing off is to worship with an intention other than to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, Worshipping in order to publicly expose your worship so that you can accumulate wealth, you can get public praise or make other people presume that you are a very religious individual. And inshallah later on in today's episode, we will come through examples, we will discuss examples. First let's understand what the Holy Quran has to say regarding showing off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Parah 3, translation from Kanz al-Iman. O people who believe, do not invalidate your charity by expressing favor and causing injury. Like one who spends his wealth for people to see and do not believe in Allah and the last day. His example is similar to that of a rock covered with dust and hard rain fell on it leaving it as bare rock. They shall get no control over anything they have earned. And Allah does not guide the disbelievers. So here, this is the verse 264 of Surah Baqarah. And Alama Mawlana Sayyid Muhammad Naeem Udin Murad Abadi Ali Rahmatullah Al-Hadi explains, he elaborates on this verse of the Holy Quran, Khazain Al-Irfan. He goes on to explain that, meaning just like a hypocrite, does not intend to please Allah. Why? Because hypocrite, from his lips, from his tongue, he'll utter that he believes in Allah, but from the heart, he will not actually believe in Allah. So Alama Sayyid Muhammad Naimudi Murad Abadi explains, it says, just like a hypocrite does not actually intend to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wastes his money by showing off while spending it. Similarly, you must not throw away the reward of the charities by recalling your favors and causing pain. Now, in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, we learn that the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, he, this hadith which is narrated by Sayyidina Abu Huraira Radiallahu Ta'ala An, he says that on judgment day, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will reveal himself as befitting for him, whatever befits Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He will reveal himself to his people in order to, to judge them. All humans will kneel on the ground. Amongst the first people to be judged will be a Hafiz Quran, secondly, a martyr, and thirdly, a rich man. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the Hafiz of the Quran, the one who has learned the entire Quran of the heart. That, did I not teach you the message that I revealed to a messenger? This Hafiz of the Quran will reply and say, of course, O Lord. To which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask, then how much did you act upon your knowledge? This man he will reply, O oh Allah, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I recited it day and night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, You are a liar. You are lying to me. This Hafiz of Quran will be amazed and shocked that I spent my entire life in teaching the Quran, in reciting the Quran, in leading the people in Taraweeh Salah. And yet, on this day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has seemed like has not accepted my worship. And not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will classify this Hafiz as a liar, but the angels will also classify this individual as a liar. After which, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will explain why he is a liar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal and he will say, you wanted people to just give you the title of Hafiz the Quran. You just wanted to give them the title that I am and you are a Quran reciter. You did not actually do this for my sake. And then the rich man will come forward. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask this rich man that I gave you wealth. And what did you do with this wealth? This man will say, yes. I use this well to strengthen the ties with my relative. I donated this in your name as well. To which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, you are a liar. And the angel will say to this person, you're a liar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, the only reason why you used to give charity, the only reason why you used to donate in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so people will say, look at this generous individual. Look at this man. Look at this man who gives a lot of money in the way of Allah used to show off. And then lastly, the martyr will arrive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks him, why were you killed? Well, this person will reply that, I was ordered to fight in your name, which I did until eventually I gave my life for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will declare and say, you are a liar. The angels will say, you are a liar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say that your intention was to be known as a brave man. Your intention was not sincerely that you are giving your life in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. Your intention was that people say, look at this brave man. Look how courageous this person was. And that you attain in the dunya. In the world you attain this. To the rich man you attain your name, your fame. Through the half of the Quran you attained everything that you wanted. Then finally the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala said that, Oh Abu Huraira, these are the first three people amongst the servants who will kinder the fire of hell on the day to do. Allahu Akbar, my dear viewers, my dear Now look at these people, these three people. One was a Hafiz of Quran. One was a martyr. One was an individual who used to give charity in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala said that amongst the first few servants of Allah, these will be the first few people who will kindle, who will be in the fire of hell. Why? Because these people used to show off. They didn't used to do it for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. They did it so that other people would praise them. So that they gain their fame and their name in this dunya. This is what we see in society, my dear viewers, my dear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes the person to do his good deeds secretly. That's why you see these five predecessors that when they used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most of their worship used to be in night. Most of their worship used to be on, on their own. Why? But this is what this is your time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now we have learned what the Quran says about showing off, what the hadith has to say regarding showing off. Now let's come under the verdict of showing off with a different verdict for each. One category is minor polytheism, another is haram, and another is makruh, whilst another is rewardable. But generally, 
When the term showing off is mentioned, it refers to the prohibited category. So here we learn there's many categories of showing off. It can be makru, it can be haram, it can be forbidden. But generally when you talk about showing off, it refers to those which are prohibited. And you might be thinking, what's the reward of showing off? That is, for example, you do a good action, you read namaz. And now you want to go and tell an individual about that, yes, I read our fasted today, it's Monday. But your intention is not you actually showing, your intention is that you encourage that individual to fast as well. So this is rewardable because you are encouraging, you're giving da'wah, you're inviting another person towards goodness. This is something which we should do as well. If you do a good act, we should mention it. If we're mentioning it, we should do in this with this intention that we want other people to do the same good action as well so that they can gain the reward as well. Once Sayyidina Malik bin Dinar lived in Damascus and used to perform itikaf in the masjid built by the great companion of the Holy Prophet and scribe of the Holy Quran, Sayyidina Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala an, the great man Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala an. One day he thought to himself, I wish I could take charge of this masjid. So what he did that he extended, he prolonged his itikaf. And he made sure that everyone that visited the masjid, they could see this individual. They could observe him that this Himalik bin Narar is in namaz, in salah. But a year passed like this. One day he stepped outside the masjid and heard a voice from the unseen that, Oh Malik, now you should repent. Now you should seek for forgiveness. After hearing this, he spent an entire year immersed in extreme grief, shame for his previous insincere worship, during which period he cleaned his heart from showing off and devoted all his night to sincere worship. One morning, some members of the community congregated outside the masjid and in order to discuss an important matter, the masjid affairs are unorganized. Therefore, we should make this man the administrator and give him the control of all the administrative matters of the masjid. The whole crowd agreed and decided to approach. After he finished the salah, they said, It is our unanimous desire to make you the administrator of our masjid. Listen to this. He humbly uttered to Allah and he said, Oh Allah, I worship pretentiously for one year in order to gain the administration of this masjid. But I fail, yet now I change my intention. Now I am worshipping you just for your sake. I am not worshipping you so that other people can see me. Not by your mercy, I have gained this glory custodian. I am now in charge of this masjid. My dear Vez Madhinsha, what do we see from this? That the great scholar Malik bin Dinar, he used to, he did an action. For, so other people can see him. His action was not accepted as soon as he changed his intention and did it. For the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted this action and granted him the custodian, the ownership, the custodian of the masjid. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Let's go through some cures for showing off. One of the cures which we can do if we have this habit of showing off is seek help from Allah. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like this, O oh Allah, Cure me from this disease of showing off. Fill my empty hands with the wonderful treasure of sincerity. I face an enemy, i.e. the devil. That sees me whilst I do not see him. Yet you can see him. O oh Allah, save me from this enemy, deception and tricks. O oh Allah, I seek your protection from being praiseworthy, virtues and pious in the eyes of humans whilst being punishable in your court. The second which could be is that contemplate, think about the harms of showing off. Like the story we mentioned that just think that if I show off, will my action be accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Just by merely changing, tweaking your intention, your action will be accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third cure is eliminate the causes. Like every illness, whenever we are ill, there's a cause for the illness. Like this, for the sins of the heart, there's a cause. So ponder and think about what is causing you to show off. Is it that you want to gain a certain position, a certain job? 
or you there's certain other causes that eliminate these reasons, eliminate the causes which are causing you to show off. Another cure is that whilst worshipping, save yourself from devilish whispers. Save yourself from the shaitanic whispers. Because you're worshipping, shaitan is an individual who whispers in your mind. And one way to save yourself from the satanic whispers is to, when you do wudu, do your wudu correctly. Do you learn the full method of wudu, the sunnah method. And inshallah, by doing wudu, you'll be protected from these uh, satanic whispers. So my dear viewers, Madhya Chai, in today's episode, we have learned that regarding the internal sins, the external sins, the link between these two. And we have also, in today's episode, discussed one of the first sins which we are going to discuss in this new series of sins of the heart, which was showing off. We learned the definition. We learned the Quran, what the Quran has to say. We learned the hadith. We learned the story. And then at the end, we learned the cures as well. My dear viewers of Madin channel, please, whilst you were watching this series, this episode, please watch it and make some notes and try to implement whatever you learn in your life as well. And make dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the ability from keeping safe from these internal sins. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Sins of the heart Ya Allah save me from from the sins of the heart Ya Allah save me from from the sins of the heart